care about protein aggregates and therapeutic products is uh, mainly because they might be involved with immunogenicity of protein aggregates. And I'll go through a little bit of information at the end here of some examples of, of what, what can happen in animal models at least. Um, it's difficult to know what causes immunogenicity of therapeutic protein products. In some cases it appears to be aggregates. The real difficulty is all products, all therapeutic protein products cause some immunogenicity in the patient population. Uh, in some cases it's fairly extensive, other cases it's only a few percent. Why do we care? Several things. It, imagine you're a Crohn's patient and you have a monoclonal antibody that is a miracle drug for you. It's controlling this condition for the first time in your life and everything's going well and 12 months later it quits working. When, when this is investigated by the clinicians, which it rarely is, it's often found that the reason for the failure of the drug to work anymore, the loss of efficacy, is because there were neutralizing antibodies caused by the drug in the patient. And the patient is referred to as a non-responder. That's not reported. That's not viewed as an adverse event or a safety problem. So when you read in the literature various studies or various clinical trials saying, you know, so many percent of patients with this drug became acquired non-responders due to immunogenicity, realize that number is vastly underreporting what's really going on. In most cases, when patients become non-responders, um, back to the Crohn's example, the doctor would just switch the patient to another monoclonal antibody product. Mm -hmm.